So I'm going to click on Out. And here when you choose Custom, this is when you actually might be using the Edit Effect controls. So I'm going to left click on Edit Effect. Under Edit Effect, it's going to look at having a starting point and an ending point depending on which effect you're using, whether you're starting as your in, so you can see here's the path of moving to the right, or the out, which is set for a fade. If I want to, I can click on Insert to insert a new key point on this effect for out. Anytime you click on Insert, it's going to drop in a new key point. And you simply left click on the key point to grab control of it. If you actually want to see what's happening with the picture in picture, you can have this PIP button activated so that you can actually see the PIP effect. If you want, you can turn it off so that you only see the pointers in this case. But I think it's a lot easier to have it on, so I'm going to leave picture in picture on. To work with these key points, basically the very large one here, this large stop sign one, is actually your starting point. The smaller one with this different type of insignia is actually your ending point. Simply left click on one of these key points takes control of it, and if you left click on it again it becomes blue so that you can bend or move it around on the screen. Left click lets you drop it back down. You can also use the position button to do this. So if I grab the ending point here and I click position, it's the same thing as if I left clicked on the active key point and allowed it to move around manually. Kind of like a rubber banding effect here. This little slider here lets you go to each key point. And you can see that you go from there to the middle one to the last one. And you can also see that this PIP seems to disappear by the time we get to the ending key point. Well, that may be because there is actually a fade loaded in here under the custom path. So what I can do is I can click on our last key point here or use our slider to go to the last key point or you can always use these little arrows to go from one point to the next. But I'm going to focus on the last key point here on the out effect. I'm going to go into edit. And here you can see on edit under these points we've been given a transparency. So what I'm going to do is increase this percentage of transparency so that now our picture in picture is a solid 100%. You can also even adjust your size if you wanted to, to raise or lower the size of the picture picture, and then hit OK. And now every time you come along the path here, we can see that we can click on each one of these, and our picture in picture now remains at 100%. If you want to add more points to the path, simply highlight one of your points and click on Insert and it'll insert a point between the one you had selected and the one after it. As you can see, it's dropped one in here. Now, commonly in a lot of Casablanca software, these are actually called key points. Here in PIP Studio, we're actually calling these uh, waypoints, more for uh, bending parameters of this particular point in the path. And when you insert one of those, you'll see that you have these choices to turn on these sliders to activate a size increase or a size decrease or have a transparency activated at that particular waypoint. Now we can kind of watch our preview for the out. Now it's going to come to the right, move down, shrink, and pop back up to full size. If you ever wish to delete a key point, you can always click on just highlight it and hit delete. And now you'll be back to one of these three key points or waypoints that we're using with the PIP Studio. Again, we can come into Edit and choose to adjust the size or the alpha on each one of these if we wanted to. Once you're done, you can hit OK to close it and hit OK to close your effect path and then left click on Transitions to return yourself back out to the Transitions menu. When we hit Create, this will build our PIP effect. You can see it's doing its custom path that we gave it a, a motion path there. And here's the final result in full screen. Now here's where if you wanted to add more than one picture in picture on the screen, you might want to do this by using your Scene Layering button. Now that I've rendered the effect, 
I can click on Scene and choose to make a layer back to our scene bin using your Effect button. This is the most powerful button in your Casablanca editor is this Scene button. The Scene button is something that comes with the Avio Pro or the Claro Pro or is available on all the other Casablanca models. Simply choose Effect in this case, because the effect lasts the whole length of the two scenes, and hit OK. When I return to the Edit menu, here is our new layered scene, the PIP Studio Effect, with the picture-in-picture -picture and its movement to the right and custom path out. Now I can add that scene up to the storyboard and follow that scene with another clip in the scene bin, which is a shot of the reception footage in this case and add that up to the storyboard. Now when I go to Transitions, I can add PIP Studio to the affected scenes on the storyboard and increase your length to the shortest scene involved, in this case a three second shot of the reception footage. Now what you're going to notice is that we have four seconds of the background scene, that layered PIP affected scene, and three seconds of this reception footage, which means that we're going to see one second of this background scene before this cake shot comes on the screen, which may be something you intended. If not, and you wanted these to merge completely, then you might have wanted to find a scene in the scene bin that is of equal length to your background scene on the storyboard, so that way they completely merge together. Now I'm going to go back into Launch PIP Studio, and you can see that it's defaulting to the original picture-in-picture -picture effect we last put in there but I'm going to take this off and actually move this one down into the lower right area here. You can always use your position and size button. You'll notice that the position little menu down at the bottom gives you a grid placement for these PIPs and size gives you a respective size approximate for pixels. You can use those as references to try and adjust these to match up if you need to. I'm actually going to change the shape on this particular picture in picture and get rid of its border. That way I can actually adjust its individual size and make it larger and maybe take off a little bit of the shadow on it. So what we get is this kind of small hazed picture in picture of this reception footage with a cake. And I might even switch this to elliptic so I can see a little bit more of this and maybe soften the border a little more. Now you can see it a little more. We just had it so soft with the blur it was just literally blending into that background scene. So now I can come back out here and I can determine do I want to have an effect with this picture in picture. Well sure, I might come into effect and set the in and the out to just have basic fades. So that this picture in picture has a quick fade in and you can see that the fade timer only goes as far as it can because the out had already been set to use a larger time of fade time. So I'm going to set each one of these to kind of a low 20 frames of a second here and hit OK and then hit preview. And now you'll see that one's coming in, in fades this picture in picture, and it has its custom path out, because I forgot to set the out point. So I'm going to go back to effect, out, take off the custom and set this to fade. I could always check under preview here, that might have been a little easier instead of coming back out of the menu. But you can always use those preview menus here to do a real quick check of the effect motion for its compressed preview. Now I can come back out of transitions and hit create to build now my second PIP. When that's done, now I can click on scene and this time I might choose effect plus scenes saying take the effect, which is three seconds, plus the two scenes that are involved and build that as a layer in my scene bin. And if I want to leave this effect up on the storyboard so I can go back and change it, I would not want to replace it on the storyboard, so I'd hit No. And now when I come back to my scene in the scene bin, here's our second PIP Studio layer in full screen preview, move to the right, custom path, and our cake comes in with a little bit of that one second delay because we had the picture in picture come up a little later on that background scene on the storyboard. So you can see PIP Studio can be a great way to weave and blend multiple images on the screen at the same time. It can take some practice with the scene layering button and a little creativity, but it will really be a great tool to add to your productions. 
check out some great examples of our PIP Studio Sampler commercial on the website at www.macrosystem.us. One tech tip about PIP Studio is that if you use long scenes and a long effect up here, you may find that you start losing some of your audio of the background scene. This is because we are merging two scenes together in a transitional effect, so the two audio samples are also merging. So you may find that this audio seems to ramp down as the audio in the second scene seems to ramp up. The best solution for this, especially if you're focusing on just the background scene's audio, is to find the original scene that you were using as your layer. In this case, here's the original montage clip of this wedding shot. And what we'll use is a filter that's common in all Casablancas, is here under Special. We'll use the filter called Scene to Sample, that's found north of the white line. This filter takes the scene in your scene bin and makes an audio copy of the original scene's audio to move to the audio bin. There's no controls here, it's as easy as hitting OK. Then returning to the main menu, we can go right to Audio Mix and make sure we select the scene on the storyboard, that's our last layer series here, and highlight one of our open tracks of audio and simply add the original track's audio underneath the same starting point of the scene on the storyboard, that's your background scene. And using your correction tools, as you've been seeing in the Smart Edit 3 training video, or any of your tutorial guides for audio, that we can do a correction during one of the samples so that the original becomes muted. That way, all we have to do is hit Create, and now we'll have this original audio of this scene in the background stay on without having any fades or dips. So again, remember that when you do a merge between two scenes as a transition, it may affect your audio, and you may have to use your Scene Sample button to put a copy of the audio of the original scene right underneath your new layered clip and mute the original audio of those layers. That way your audio stays intact.